Live from Studio 7E in Rockefeller Center, this is Weekend Today in New York. Welcome back on a Sunday morning. Well, that fire that tore through Seton Hall University more than 12 years ago took the lives of three students and changed the lives of many others. And now a new film is documenting how two students found friendship and hope after the fire. News 4's Michael Gargiulo sat down with the students and their people telling their stories. There's kids hanging out the windows and dark black smoke coming out from over their heads. We're making our way in. The student is coming out, and I could not tell you if it was a boy or a girl. Completely burnt, smoking, no hair. Their face was completely blackened. I cannot imagine how these kids made it. Joining me this morning are Sean Simons, Alvaro Llanos, along with the film's director and producer, Guido Vervain, and Pulitzer Prize winning author, Robin Gabby Fisher. Welcome to you all. Thank you. Thank you. And Sean and Alvaro, I want to start with you. And Sean, uh, this is a movie about your life, about your experiences and Alvaro's. And many people would think after what you've been through that you wouldn't want to live through it again uh, on screen. Why did you want to do that? Well, I felt that uh, our story is very inspirational to uh, many people, especially those going to college. Um, it gives them a sense of um, letting the, let them know the troubles that we went through and how we got through them and how to prosper afterwards. And Alvaro, for you to watch this, uh, what do you get from it? Is it is it positive experience for you? Well, one thing is, you know, it's a positive experience to um, you, you get. You, you get some information from other people around you that were, you, you know, what they were going through, and you realize how, how much how hard it was for them and the obstacles they had to overcome, the, you know, them, themselves. And um, just knowing that everybody in this world, all we all have obstacles from big to small, and everything we've been through, show everyone that anything's possible. Every, every obstacle is, over, is easy to overcome. When you see the scenes uh, right after you both were brought to the hospital, it's harrowing. It's harrowing. What is it like for you both to watch that again? Um, it's a little, you know, it's a little nerve-wracking you to, to, you know, see uh, the experience that, that we had to go through. But in the same sense, it shows that, you know, uh, that the people around us did great work and everybody was trying their best to get us back to some what of a normal life. You know, Gabby, when I, when I watched this film and read about it and, and looked into it, as we see some of it here, I kept thinking, all this didn't have to happen. It was one of those things that happens in college, a snap decision, a rush decision, and then here are the consequences. Do you ever look at this as you were writing it, as you were investigating, and say, all this, all this pain and suffering could have been easily, easily avoided? Absolutely. If two students didn't act foolishly, and then stonewall authorities for years, uh, it would have saved a lot of pain for a lot of people, absolutely. You described this, and it has been described as a, a story of the bravest and the least brave, the cowards. Tell us about that. Well, I mean, two students set the fire, and um, they could have saved everyone a great deal of pain had they come out immediately and said, this was a prank that, that went wrong. Um, instead, with the help of their parents, they stonewalled investigators for four years, um, and the people who had children who died in the fire were left with no answers, and these guys were left with knowing who did it, but wondering why won't they just say they did it. Um, so I think that they made it a uh, hundred times worse for everyone by not just owning up to what they did. Uh, Guido, when you look at putting this together as a film and you're working, it's part documentary, it's part film, it's part lesson, how did you, and you're working from all different sources here, news video, interviews that you did, how did you try to put this together to tell a story that was more than just here's a long news report? How did you try to do that? Well, the, the story is extremely cinematic. The photographs um, from uh, Matt Rainey, who won a Pulitzer Prize piece, they're so cinematic, they're so soulful. Um, you know, to me, it, um, the story has such a big scope. It's about faith, love, friendship, healing, forgiveness, all these things that interest me as a filmmaker. And I really was inspired to do this story and keep it alive. And, um, you know, I think it's an important one to keep. And of our own show, and one of the messages that come out of the story is you were tied together by your experience, by your injuries, by your recovery. What about your relationship with each other? Well, we formed a bond that many college roommates will never ever be able to form. You know, um, we went through this 
tragedy together, we came through it together, and we're still best friends to this day, so it's made us better people. It's your story on the screen here. After the fire, I want to thank you so much for all joining us this morning in an important film hope people see and, and learn from. Thanks so much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.